Let me now talk about the conditional distribution when the random variables are continuous. So, in that case it will be your uh, probability density function x given y. So, the notation will be this and so you will write it as the uh, joint of f x y at x comma y divided by the uh, marginal of uh, y at small y right. And uh, uh, see the uh, way to explain this is because since we know that uh, the um, continue in the continuous case uh, the probability at a fixed point is 0. So, therefore, uh, the way to look at it is you know if I uh, multiply both sides by d x and then uh, multiply and divide by d y here, then you see um, this represents this represents well this will be the conditional uh, probability of um, x given that capital Y is y and x is between uh, x comma x plus d x and here on the right hand side uh, you can uh, you can uh, uh, you can interpret f x comma y d x d y as probability x less than or equal to x less than or equal to x plus d x comma y less than or equal to y uh, that means capital y between y and y plus d y you can look at it this way because the dy and dx are small divided by. So, this will be probability capital Y between small y and y plus dy. Okay. So, therefore, uh, you can say that uh, this ratio represents the conditional uh, probability of um, x lying between uh, small x and x plus dx, when you are given that uh, capital Y is between y and y plus dy. Okay, so, this is what I have expressed here uh, that capital X belongs to x comma x plus d x given that y belongs to y comma y plus d y. Now, um, let us just look at an example. So, suppose this is a, a joint density function x lying between 0 and 1, y is between 0 and 1 and you can verify that this is a uh, joint PDF that means, double integral uh, of this expression should be uh, equal to 1, when your x and y are between 0 and 1. Okay. So, uh, but uh, to find out the conditional, uh, uh, so if I wanted to write down the conditional p d f of x given y, then I need to compute the marginal of y, which uh, I hope the arithmetic is ok. So, therefore, this uh, will be the, uh, when you integrate, right. 3 x into 3 minus x minus 2 y, uh, this will be the expression between 0 and 1. So, this will be 9 by 2 minus 1 minus 3 y minus 3 y. Yeah, so, remember that because y capital Y is fixed at small y, the um, yes. So, this is okay, this is the marginal, yeah, this is the marginal of y. So, obviously, it will be a function of y only. Yeah, but I had something else in mind, which I will tell you right now. Yeah, so now uh, if you want to find out the conditional uh, of x given y, then that by definition is this ratio f x comma y divided by f y of uh, small y, and uh, this uh, I'll because I've computed f y y for you, so this is the ratio, and therefore this comes out to be this. Okay. So, that means, for uh, for a fixed x and y, this will be the uh, conditional p d f of uh, x given y. And so, here your x will vary between 0 and 1. Okay. Now, if you have to find out this probability x greater than half, given that capital Y is equal to y. So, this will be um, uh, integration half to 1 of this conditional p d f, right, where y is being treated as a constant. right. So, you integrate respect to x and uh, here again this is the arithmetic 3 x square by 2 minus x cube by 3 minus um, x square y, because the 2 cancels okay, from half to 1 and then uh, this is the denominator, which I do not have to do anything. So, I do the computations here, um, please verify the arithmetic that thing should add up and so the final expression is this the final expression is this, which will be a function of y. 
because here you have given a value to x, x all values of x greater than or equal to half. So, therefore, this conditional uh, probability uh, x greater than or equal to greater than half or does not matter for the continuous case it does not matter uh, given that y is y it turns out to be uh, this expression. So, uh, now once we have this uh, and I think uh, uh, for the for the continuous case for the discrete case also uh, we wrote down the uh, 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 distribu cumulative distribution function or cumulative uh, this thing and then you can uh, write down the uh, probability conditional probability mass function also exactly in the same way. So, therefore, there is nothing new Maybe I did not actually write down the expression, but uh, that does not matter. So, let me now uh, begin the topic uh, 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 joint probability distributions of functions of random variable. So, uh, just before this I talked about joint distributions of uh, random variables. Now, let us take uh, the uh, joint distributions of uh, probability distributions of functions of random variables. Uh, so, because this also we need uh, often to compute uh, certain uh, probabilities and so on. So, now um, x 1 and x 2 are jointly distributed continuous random variables with f x 1 x 2 as their joint p d f. Okay. So, uh, then suppose y 1 is a function of uh, x 1 and x 2 and y 2 is a function of x 1 and x 2. So, g 1 represents the uh, function of x 1 and x 2, which is uh, represented by y 1 and g 2 is a function, which represents y 2. So, where g 1 and g 2 have to satisfy certain conditions and uh, this is what we are saying is that, if you look at these, these two equations. So, uh, then there must be a unique solution and uh, or in fact, if there are more than one, then you should be able to uh, fix uh, the uh, values of y 1 and uh, the values of x 1 and x 2 that you will take corresponding to the values of y 1 and y 2. So, in other words what you are saying that we should have these solutions in a uh, deterministic way there should be no ambiguity about it. So, x 1 should be h 1 of y 1 comma y 2 and x 2 is h 2 of y 1 comma y 2. So, I can solve this set of equations to get uh, the values of x 1 and x 2 for given values of y 1 and y 2. And then the second condition is that this Jacobian as we call it, this should be a set of partial derivatives, which are uh, continuous. So, the first order partial derivative, I have not written it here, okay. uh, maybe that also has to be mentioned. Uh, first order partial derivatives of uh, g 1 and g 2 um, are continuous. So, therefore, they exist and are continuous. So, first order partial derivatives exist are continuous, then we define this uh, determinant, which is uh, delta g 1 by delta x 1, delta g 2 by delta x 1, then delta g 1 by delta x 2 and delta g 2 by delta x 2. So, the notation is sometimes some people also use uh, the notation, uh, this will be y 1 y 2 upon x 1 x 2 and so on, because whatever you have in the uh, denominator. The, so, uh, there are one or two uh, other notations for the uh, Jacobian also and this should not be uh, 0 for all x 1 x 2 in the valid region. So, this should be a non singular matrix and therefore, its determinant is not 0. Now, um, uh, this quantity we call the Jacobian determinant here okay. and um, then uh, the transformation this that means, when you are wanting to find out uh, the p d f of uh, y 1 y 2 respect to uh, the p d f of y 1 y 2, then that can be obtained in terms of the p d f of x 1 and x 2 as uh, this f x 1 x 2. So, this thing now here of course, you will substitute for x 1 in terms of because you are able to solve um, x 1 and x 2 in terms of y 1 y 2. So, you can substitute that here, this will be the uh, absolute value. Okay. These two lines indicate the an inverse of the Jacobian. So, you have this matrix, uh, compute this uh, determinant and then take its inverse and uh, the absolute value. Okay. Now, uh, I will try to give you a feeling about, see what this says is that uh, the, the fact that this is non-zero, you can see that if it was 0, p d f of f y 1 y 2 at small y 1 y 2 is not defined, since division by 0 is not permissible. Otherwise, uh, there is no po point of point in talking of such transformations, where the Jacobian is 0 
And uh, there are so many uh, ways you can uh, interpret uh, this concept of Jacobian, but I will just try to show you uh, one aspect here. And that says that, uh, absolute value of the Jacobian determinant at a point p, gives us the factor by which the, the, the function uh, expands or shrinks the area uh, in bracket volume, if we are talking in three dimensions near the point p. So, it will shrink if uh, the absolute value of Jacobian is uh, Jacobian determinant is less than 1 and it will expand if the uh, determinant of the Jacobian uh, is greater than 1 and near the point p. So, if you are uh, the, the, uh, the coordinates that we are considering are um, x 1, x 2 and y 1, y 2 in the transformed plane, then um, near the point p in the transformed space. So, the area in the x y plane uh, in the x 1, x 2 plane will get transformed to the area element of uh, around the point p. That means, we are talking in terms of element of area. So, around p in the y 1, y 2 plane by the um, value uh, determinant of the Jacobian. Let us consider this example. example. So, x 1 and x 2 are jointly distributed random variables with f x 1, x 2 as their uh, p d f and let y 1 be uh, the equal to x 1 plus x 2 and y 2 is x 1 minus x 2. So, we define two new random variables as functions of x 1 and x 2. So, this implies that your x 1 is half y 1 plus y 2 and x 2 is half y 1 minus y 2. So, Jacobian if you want to compute, then it will be the derivative of this with respect to. Uh, so, uh, here when you uh, differentiate with respect to y 1, this will be 1 and uh, differentiate respect to that means, you are differentiating x 1 with respect to y 1 and y 2. So, this is 1 and 1, then you differentiate x 2 with respect to y 1 and y 2, it will be 1 and minus 1. So, the value of this determinant is minus 2 and if you take the um, uh, absolute value, it will be 2 and the inverse val value of the inverse of the Jacobian uh, determinant uh, of the Jacobian and with the absolute value will be 1 by 2. So, according to this formula, our uh, p d f for y 1, y 2 would be equal to half f of x 1, x 2, the p d f for x 1, x 2, when you substitute for um, x small x 1 and small x 2 in terms of y 1 and y 2. So, this is y 1 plus y 2 by 2 and this is y 1 minus y 2 by 2. And so, what I am trying to say, which I just said a few minutes ago, is that you know the, uh, you can treat if you have take a small element of area, which is d x 1 um, uh, sorry d y 1 d y 2 here uh, in the y 1 y 2 plane, this is d y. So, element of area. So, we treat this the density uh, as the uh, probability density over d y 1 and d y 2. And here, if you look at this part, this will be the uh, probability density over the element of area d x 1 and d x 2. And in this case, of course, since we are taking a very small element of area, I can treat, so I can say that this is half times this, the density is the relationship between the two densities. I am just trying to get a feeling, give you a feeling about this. Okay. Anyway, and then you can see that here, if, if you take the particular case that x 1 and x 2 are uh, uniform 0 1, both are distributed uniform uh, are both are both are random variables uniform random variables over 0 1. Then you see um, your transformation and if I am taking y 1 as x 1 plus x 2 and x y 2 as x 1 minus x 2, then you see here uh, this p d f for y 1 and y 2 by that formula would be half into 1 1, because the uh, they are um, uniform and I am treating them as independent. So, I am taking 1 into 1, right. The p d f of both uh, the f x 1 x 2 would be simply product of f x 1 into f x 2. And so, uh, both being uniform, this is 1 1. And so, this is the formula you get. And the um, range is uh, y 1 plus y 2 varies from 0 to 2. And so, you can get the individual uh, ranges, which I have drawn here. So, the uh, area, uh, when you consider the x 1 x 2 variables, this is the area right and this uh, equals 1 the area right now uh, this gets transformed to uh, the uh, this kind of region in the y 1 y 2 plane 
right. If you draw these y 1 plus y 2 equal to 0 and y 1 plus y 2 equal to 2, which are these two lines and y 1 minus y 2 equal to 0 is this and y 1 minus y 2 equal to 2 is this line. So, it is this area which you get. So, A uh, gets transformed to B and you see the area here is 2 units. This is 1 unit and 2 units and this is what I want to explain that uh, since um, Jacobian is a constant. So, therefore, you see this probability density is the same over the whole area and that is the feeling I want to give you. And so, the relationship between the two areas here, because now that the um, Jacobian is a constant. So, therefore, the area A, uh, the, the, which is 1 unit is uh, goes, goes over to area uh, 2 in the uh, y 1 y 2 plane or in other words you can also say that because uh, see this density is half into 1 1. So, uh, when you integrate over the whole of B uh, this whole thing should add up to uh, should integrate to 1 right which is half area B which is 1. So, area B is 2 and uh, when you equate the two uh, p d f if you for example, do this and integrate. So, see this area if you just do this this is 1 right and this uh, this area also has to be 1 uh, well, I mean the integral. So, I mean uh, I am trying to say that this integral and this integral both. So, this has to be uh, 1 and this must be 1, but then this is related by this half. So, therefore, this will be um, uh, you know twice this. So, therefore, the density will turn out to be half. So, therefore, this density will be half of this because this must add up to this integrate must integrate to 1 this integrates to 1, if you just took the x 1 x 2 variables and this value is half. So, this is equal to twice this. So, therefore, the density for this one becomes half the density for x 1 and x 2. Uh, I am just, uh, this is my own interpretation and I am trying to give you. Now, uh, consider um, when x 1 and x 2 are independent exponential random variables with respective parameters lambda 1 and lambda 2. Right, and they are. Um, but I'm treating again, uh, treating them as independent. So therefore, uh, with the same transformation that y1 is x1 plus x2 and y2 is x1 minus x2, then the PDF for y1, y2 by that formula would be because the Jacobian is again in J inverse of the um, Jacobian is half, uh, and the, the determinant, and this will be lambda 1, lambda 2, product of the two uh, PDFs for x1 and x2 with uh, x 1 replaced by y 1 plus y 2 by 2 and uh, x 2 replaced by y 1 minus y 2 by 2. And the uh, limits here would be, because x 1 goes from 0 to infinity, x 2 goes from 0 to infinity. So, this will be this, since uh, they are both non negative. So, this is it, but so now you can compute the individual limits for y 1 and y 2. Now, the finally, if x 1 and x 2 are independent standard normal ram random variables, uh, then uh, you see uh, this will be the uh, your joint would be uh, because they are independent. So, your joint anyway it will be 1 upon what is it root 2 pi e raise to minus 1 by 2 and they are standard normal. So, it is simply x 1 square is for this thing and 1 upon root 2 pi e raise to minus 1 by 2 x 2 square your sigma square is 1, mean is 0. So, these are the two uh, individual p d f. So, you multiply them. So, that becomes 1 by uh, 4 pi, 1 by 4 pi into oh, root 2 pi root 2 pi. So, the half, the Jacobian is half and then this is this product is 2 pi. So, 1 upon 2 pi into 2, this becomes 1 by 4 pi and then this is e raise to minus half pi 1 plus y 2 whole square by 4. Yeah, Because your x 1 is what? Uh, x 1 I am writing as 1 by 2. So, this should be huh, taken. So, 1 by 2 and then y 1 plus y 2 by 4 whole square. Then similarly, minus 1 by 2 x 2 square x 2 is y 1 minus y 2 by 2. So, the square gives me y 1 minus y 2 whole square by 4. Right. And the variance of y 1 plus y 2 is 2, variance of y 1 minus y 2 is 2. Right. Because again y 1 and y 2 are independent. I have computed this for you. Oh, okay, uh, fine. Uh, we will, we will uh, come to this conclusion later on, but let me continue with this. So, now, what I have done is, um, yes, I have written, see the, I have written this expression y 1 plus y 2 whole square by 4 plus y 1 minus y 2 whole square by 4. 
uh, see the coefficients here, hmm. the half I have left out just these two terms. So, then they add up to because the product term here will be 2 y 1 y 2 plus 2 y 1 y 2 and here it will be minus 2 y 1 y 2 divided by 4. So, that cancels out and you get twice y 1 square plus twice y 2 square. So, therefore, 2 upon 4 that gives you half y 1 square plus y 2 square. So, this whole thing reduces to e raise to minus 1 by 2 then y 1 square plus y 2 square by 2. right? And then uh, I can again write 1 by 4 pi as 1 upon under root 4 pi into 1 upon under root 4 pi. And since, um, yeah, so now I am saying that this is 1 upon root 4 pi into e raise to minus 1 by 2 y 1 square by 2 into 1 upon 4 uh, root 4 pi e raise to minus 1 by 2 y 2 square by 2. So, you see the uh, p d f here separates out into uh, two simple uh, single uh, variable p d f s. And so, I uh, will conclude that y 1 and y 2 are um, y 1 and y 2 are independent and you see that uh, therefore, the variance y 1 plus y 2. Actually, I can also compute the variance of y 1 right. Okay. So, y variance of y 1 plus y 2 is 2. Why am I saying that? Variance of y 1 plus y 2. or am I concluding from here? Oh, okay. No, 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 this is this is a wrong statement. That is why I was saying that this is not right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is because x 1 and x 2 are independent. Therefore, I should have written variance x 1 plus x 2 is 2. Yeah, variance of x 1 is 1, variance of x 2 is 1 and these are uh, independent. So, this is this. Similarly, variance of x 1 minus x 2 is also 2. Right. So, therefore, um, uh, y 1 uh, when you are looking at. So, now y 1 is what? y 1 is um, y 1 is uh, here, uh, where did I define it? Yeah y 1 is x 1 plus x 2 and y 2 is x 1 minus x 2. So, therefore, uh, y 1 and we have also seen that the sum of normal random variables uh, is again normal. So, here uh, the mean is 0, the variance is 2. So, y 1 is normal and y 2 is normal and therefore, this is in accordance with uh, because if y 1 is normal uh, 0 2, then you are dividing by uh, 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 the variance square. So, y 1 square by sigma square. So, 2 sigma square. So, this is y 1 square upon 2 sigma square 1 upon uh, root 2 pi into root 2, because standard deviation will be root 2. So, that becomes 1 upon root 4 pi. So, this is all in accordance with this and therefore, uh, you can say that uh, y 1 and y 2 are also independent uh, stand uh, independent normal variables. And this happens only because you see um, that is why I took three examples. Uh, for the same case, I first took x 1 and x 2 to be jointly uh, uniform. Then we wrote down the, um, uh, then we wrote down the uh, p d f of uh, uh, y 1 and y 2. So, what did that come out to be? Simply this, right, which uh, uh, you cannot say, uh, because it is constant in this area that is all. So, okay, from here it will probably, uh, will it follow that this is uh, uniform, okay, uh, think about it. But, uh, when you took the uh, distributions for x 1, x 2 to be exponential, then uh, uh, what did you get? You did not get any uh, separation here. So, therefore, you here you cannot conclude that y 1 and y 2 are independent, but when you took uh, uh, the x 1 and x 2 to be standard normal independent uh, random variables, then it turns out that uh, x 1 plus x 2 and x 1 minus x 2 are also independent, are also independent and normally distributed. So, this happens for a normal distribution, for when x 1 and x 2 are normally distributed independent random variables, then these functions will also be uh, normally distributed and they will be in, I mean for x 1 plus x 2 and x 1 minus x 2. I am not claiming that this will happen for any uh, functions of uh, uh, normal random variables, but in case when the functions are x 1 plus x 2 and x 1 minus x 2, then they turn out to be uh, uh, independent. 
they will be normal, yes that of course, we know we from the property of normal distributions already we have seen it. So, this is the case. Okay. Uh, let me continue with another example of um, functions of random variables. So, here x 1 and x 2 are independent random variables each exponentially distributed with parameter lambda. So, now uh, the question asked is are the random variables u equal to x 1 plus x 2 and v equal to x 1 upon x 2 independent. Okay. So, therefore, we will find the joint density function of u comma v and see if it can be separated out into a, a function of u and a function of v. So, write the Jacobian, uh, the Jacobian is here um, uh, this is 1 1 the partial derivatives for v the partial derivatives are 1 upon x 2 and minus x 1 upon x 2 square. So, therefore, the determinant is equal to this which can be written like this right. Now, uh, compute to the inverse functions. So, here um, uh, from the second equation uh, you see that uh, x 1 is v x 2 uh, therefore, this is this now I substitute in uh, in this equation. So, for x 1 so that will be uh, yeah if you write it down now that is what I am doing here. So, if you write it for x 1 plus x 2 then x 1 is um, u into uh, uh, x 2 uh, we just said that x 1 is u uh, v x 2. So, v x 2 if you write out right. So, here you do that and therefore, um, when you write x 1 as v x 2. So, v x 2 plus x 2. So, x 2 outside 1 plus v. So, your um, x 2 becomes u upon 1 plus v and then so you from here you get that x 1 is u v upon 1 plus v. And if you write x 1 plus x 2 that comes out to be u. Well, <laughs> okay, that is already given to us. It is simply a verification. Okay. Fine. So, then um, you will sub that means, the formula gives you the joint p d f of f u v, which will be uh, the Jacobian inverse. So, x 2 square upon x 1 plus x 2 absolute value of this, uh, which is equal to this. And then, because um, x 1 and x 2 are independent, so uh, the uh, joint p d f is the product. So, uh, for each uh, the p d f is lambda into e raise to minus lambda u uh, uh, lambda x x lambda x 1 and then lambda. So, here uh, it will be lambda times x 1 plus x 2, which we have uh, uh, which, uh, which we are given to be as u. So, this is your p d f for and of course, uh, uh, you will substitute for um, uh, x 1 and x 2 in terms of u and v. So, you can immediately see that x 2 square is u square upon 1 plus v square and then x 1 plus x 2 is u. So, therefore, your final function is u upon 1 plus v whole square lambda square e raise to minus lambda u. Now, I was trying to see uh, draw the picture, but again uh, because see the region for uh, x 1 x 2 is a whole of first quadrant and it looks like that uh, for u and v also, because u and v are also both non negative and both are extending to infinity. So, it appears that uh, here since the regions are infinite, therefore, I cannot show you any shrinking or anything. In any case, this is a um, this is dependent on the uh, point. So, this uh, the Jacobian is not a constant here. Okay. So, uh, it will depend on the uh, coordinate values x 1, x 2 and so on. So, therefore, I cannot do much here, but you see now this and of course, your limits for u are from 0 to infinity and for v uh, from 0 to infinity. And now, I just uh, can write this down as a, a product of two functions. So, lambda square e raise to minus lambda u into u is 1 and 1 upon 1 plus v square is the other function. So, since I have and I remember I gave you this proposition uh, in the earlier lecture that um, uh, if there is a p d f which can be uh, written out separately as a, a function of single variables, then uh, each of them must be p d f themselves for the corresponding random variable. So, now I want you to verify that the two uh, functions uh, represent uh, the p d f. That means, this is a p d f from 0 to infinity show that this integral is um, uh, 1. Similarly, this integral from 0 to uh, infinity is 1, right? which you can do by iterative integration here and they are both non negative. So, therefore, uh, we will conclude that which I did not write here that u and v are independent. So, I will now talk about uh, exercises 5, which is uh, you know collection of problems from 
whatever we have been discussing, uh, discussing in the last uh, 3 to 4 lectures. Um, let us see again as usual, I will try to give you small hints and then you should be able to uh, work out the problems. In question 1, 3 balls are chosen without replacement from an urn consisting of 3 white and 8 red balls. So, uh, x i equals 1 if i th ball selected is white. So, you know you have first, second and third balls which are chosen without replacement. So, the if the i th ball is uh, uh, is white then you put x i equal to 1 and 0 otherwise. So, give the joint probability mass function of x 1 x 2. So, again you will uh, make that chart we have shown you right. Uh, you know um, rows will be for x 1 and uh, columns will be for x 2 and then you can write out for different values. And um, then they want you to write also the joint probability mass function of x 1, x 2 and x 3. So, now in this case you will have to simply write 3 values, because it will be x 1, x 2 and x 3 uh, all of them right. So, um, uh, 3 dimensional I have been discussing with you 2 dimensional so far. So, I thought let me include this and let us see how you uh, try out this problem. Question 2, the joint probability density function of x and y is given by this function e raise to minus x plus y, x and y between 0 and infinity, then find probability x less than y. So, now this is the event, that means the region. So, you will draw the line. So, here it is simple, uh, this is this. So, the whole of first quadrant is your uh, valid region. Now, you want to find the probability. So, it will be under this region x is oh, okay, the other way uh, this is x less than y sorry. So, it will be this this region right. So, therefore, uh, fix your uh, limits accordingly and you will be able to uh, you can immediately write down the limits from here, because x has to be less than y. So, therefore, x cannot vary from beyond y. So, it will be 0 to y and then y of course, varies from 0 to infinity then uh, probability x less than a. So, in the b you will have to find the marginal of um, uh, x first and then compute this probability. Okay. Yeah, this is problem 3 now. Yeah, the problem 3 says you are given the joint density function of x and y, um, which is f x y is 2, if um, 0 is less than x less than y and y is between 0 and 1, 0 otherwise. Are x and y independent? So, now as I told you since the limits of x are dependent on y, uh, my uh, immediate reaction would be that no, they are not independent, but you will have to find out the marginals and then show that the joint is not the product of the marginals. If x and y were given by um, this uh, new function which is f x y equal to x into e raise to minus x plus y 0, then uh, and f now the limits for x and y are independent of each other. So, in this case uh, again you can break up your um, joint p d f into x into e raise to minus x into e raise to minus y. So, therefore, uh, they should be uh, they should turn out to be independent. Okay. Yeah. Now, question 4 says that 2 dice are rolled. Let x and y denote respectively the largest and the smallest values obtained. Compute the conditional mass function of y given x is i for i varying from 1, 2 to 6. So, that means, you will fix a value of i uh, for of x and then say uh, are x and y independent, y all this you have to answer. So, you are quite familiar with now rolling of 2 dice and how you write down the probabilities. So, therefore, you should be able to answer question 4. Question 5, the joint probability mass function of x and y is given by. Uh, so, this is now discrete uh, set of random variables. Uh, and uh, you are given the uh, probabilities here. Compute the conditional mass function of x given y is i, i varying from 1 to 2. So, there will be two uh, conditional mass functions, one for when uh, y is equal to 1 and the other when y is equal to <coughs> 2. Are x and y independent? Apply the condition for independence and compute x y less than or equal to 3, uh, probability x plus y greater than 2 and probability x upon y greater than 1. So, here you see uh, the values of y are not 0 anywhere, y takes the values 1 and 2 and x takes the values 1 and 2. So, all questions are valid and you should be able to answer them. Okay. <coughs> 6 is again you are given a joint density function of x and y and here you see y varies between minus and x, x, minus x and x, draw the region 
then find the conditional distribution of y given that x is equal to x. So, I have just included all these things, they are different from each other, but then uh, you get the uh, you get an idea when you solve these problems. Uh, x and y have joint density function uh, given by 1 upon x square y square, x and y are greater than or equal to 1. Uh, compute the joint density function of u equal to x y and v equal to x uh, by y, it should be what are the marginal densities. So, anyway uh, the joint this thing uh, density function you will uh, compute by using the Jacobian method right and then try to draw the um, uh, uh, try to draw the uh, regions, because for x greater than 1 and y greater than 1 it is simply uh, this thing when you take see this is 1 and this is 1. So, in the original thing this is the region right and uh, here of course, I can just give you a hint, because uh, when u is uh, equal to x y um, and so you will have to write uh, x in terms of u and y, v in terms of uh, y in terms of u and v and then uh, you see that uh, the region how the region is transformed. So, do it, uh, because I have given you an idea already and you have to then compute the marginal densities of uh, u and v. Okay. So, 8 question 8 is um, uh, 1 should have been a suffix, but it does not matter x 1 to x n be independent exponential random variables having a common parameter lambda. So, all of them are coming that means, they are uh, observed values from an exponential uh, distribution with parameter lambda. Determine the distribution of minimum x 1, x 2, x n. So, this is what I have already discussed with you, right? Uh, finding out the uh, uh, p d f of x bracket 1. That means, the smallest of the uh, n sample values. If x and y are independent binomial random variables with uh, w i t h. So, just make the correction with identical parameters n and p. So, x and y are the same binomial distribution having the same binomial distribution show analytically that the conditional distribution of x given that x plus y is m is the hypergeometric distribution there should have been a full stop is the hypergeometric distribution also give a second argument that yields the result without any computations. In the ninth problem, you are given two binomial uh, independent binomial random variables with identical parameters n and p. So, you have to find the conditional distribution of x given that x plus y is m and you have to show that this is a hypergeometric distribution. And this I have again added this problem, because I have already shown you a similar uh, I have solved a similar problem in the lecture and also give a second argument that yields a result without any computations. So, uh, the hint is given here and uh, you can argue that given a total num total of m heads, the number of heads in the first n flips has the same distribution as the number of white balls selected. Okay. So, you figure out the hint and then see if it is useful. Okay. Now, the tenth problem is random variables x and y are said to have a bivariate normal distribution, if their joint density is given by this. So, here I have not discussed this in the uh, lectures, but I thought you should be able to work on this. So, a bivariate uh, normal uh, random variable uh, distribution is of this form, where you have the square term with respect to x, with respect to y and then you have the product term. And of course, uh, uh, the row part, which will uh, uh, by the time you get to this problem, I think I would have uh, discussed with you, uh, which is the uh, correlation coefficient. So, uh, this is the expression, but anyway right now this is a. So, now you have to show that the conditional density of x given that y equal to y is the normal density with parameters. So, you see the moment you fix your um, uh, y, then you can rearrange the terms and write them in the form. So, that this becomes the mean of uh, the uh, conditional variable that means, the conditional density of x given that y is y and your um, variance will become sigma x square into 1 minus rho square. So, you can it is just a question of uh, you know manipulating the terms and since you already know what you have to show, therefore, this will not be difficult. Then show that x and y are both normal random variables with respective parameters mu x sigma x square and mu y sigma y square. So, here you see uh, if x and y are two 
uh, normal variates, then the joint density function is given here above. And then you can show that uh, when you compute, when you do the integration, for, uh, when you integrate f x y with respect to y from uh, minus infinity to infinity, you will get well, uh, distribution with the mean mu x and uh, variance sigma x square. And similarly, when you integrate respect to x, you will get the uh, marginal of uh, y, which will come out to be normal with mean mu y and variance sigma y square. So, part c says that show that x and y are independent when rho is 0. See now here, if you look at the expression for f x y, then uh, by putting rho equal to 0, you see um, this coefficient under root 1 minus rho square will become 1, then 1 upon 1 minus rho square will become 1 and the product term in the exponential uh, will become 0. And so, the uh, joint density function will become product of marginals of x and y. Right. You can see immediately, because I can write 2 pi as root 2 pi into root pi root 2 pi, then sigma x into e raise to minus 1 by 2 x minus mu whole square upon sigma x square into 1 upon root 2 pi sigma y e raise to minus 1 by 2 uh, y minus y, mu y upon sigma y whole square. So, it will become product of two marginals. So, therefore, um, the two x and y by our theorem x and y are independent and the converse is also true. Um, that is, if uh, of course, uh, if uh, that we, uh, okay, I have talked about the converse. The actual thing is that um, if x and y are independent, then of course uh, rho must be zero. That's what I'm saying here. Show that x and y are independent when rho is zero. So here I'm asking you to talk about the converse. Uh, the uh, the theorem is that if x and y are independent, then rho must be zero. So, this is what you have to show and also what I am saying is that the converse is true. That means, if rho is 0 for a bivariate uh, normal random variable, the x comma y being a bivariate normal distribution, having a no bivariate normal distribution, then if rho is 0, uh, we can also show that x and y are independent. And so, this we will discuss in lecture 17 also and then later on I will show you that uh, the covariance of a bivariate normal random variable x comma y is uh, given by rho. So, this we will discuss much later in lecture 23. See in uh, part c of question 10, we have to show that x and y are independent when rho is 0. So, what I we have said so far is that if okay, 11th problem, the joint density function of x and y is given like this and here um, x varies between 0 and 1 and uh, y varies between 0 and 2. First question is are x and y independent? Yes, you can answer uh, because the limits are separate and the um, uh, joint p d f can be separated into x into y, uh, but I would like you to find out the. Um, so, anyway you are finding out the density function of x, the density function of y and then the uh, find the joint distribution function. Uh, the, the distribution function. So, you are asked to find the um, cumulative distribution function and then find E y and find probability x plus y less than 1. So, again this is I have just included this as an exercise, so that you get uh, more familiar with the uh, how you work out these different integrals. Okay, there is another problem uh, number 12, the p d f of random variable x is shown below. Okay, this is a single one, find density function of 1 upon x. So, this I have included, because um, I thought we had not discussed uh, many functions of a single random variable. So, therefore, find density function of 1 upon x, e raise to x, ln x, ln x is again uh, the log with base e and uh, a x plus b. Again, again simply as a exercise to get familiar with uh, you know uh, how you uh, how you find out the limits and so on and the ranges uh, for different functions and so on. If x 1 and x 2 are independent random variables with same probability distribution function as x, find the probability distribution function of x 1 upon x 2 and x 1 x 2. So, as you may feel that some some way other things are uh, repeated does not matter, do um, as much practice as you can to get a good feeling about how you handle these. Thank you.